I do think that um, there are situations where uh, where where self publishing is a better route to go than traditional publishing, and I'll, and I can give you an example of that. And I also think that traditional publishing is right now is still better um, for some people for some situations. And I can do you want me to get, do you want me to go absolutely, into that? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, so without giving it away, because this. Uh, author didn't doesn't want me to tell what her idea is because she's worried that someone will feed her to market <laughs> <laughs> but she has a very unique situation in that um her she has a uh, a child that has a disease a rare you know a rare disease not that rare but it's a it's a it's a life-threatening disease unfortunately and she went to the doctor and the and the, when the first guy diagnosed, and they went through counseling and stuff like that, and they were given this book at the hospital, and the book um, was kind of a "you have this disease" mm-hmm. kind of a book, and how to deal with it and how to cope. But it was horribly illustrated and horribly written in that. And what she, I didn't never saw the book, but this is from her description: sure. is that the book is basically like you have this and you're going to die. So there you go. Kind of, you know, really matter of fact, you know, <laughs> and it was it not in a, it, it, she, it, the way she described it, it was just horrible. And the, the, the nurses, when they gave her the book, they apologized. They, they're like, look, we're giving you this, but we're sorry that we're oh, giving it to you because geez. we have to, like, it's part of the packet, mm-hmm. but just know that we hate this book kind of that. She got that vibe, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so she's um, she had been dabbling in illustration and kind of uh, she's learning. She's she's kind of still in the beginner stage, but she's you know very passionate about uh, learning and and growing her skills. And she she thought, my goodness, man, I could do better than this, you know. So in, in this case, if she took her idea to um, well, before I go there, uh, she, uh, she, she approached several people. She even approached the industry, uh, the association for the disease and said, Hey, I'm thinking about making this book. What do you think? You know, it, it would replace this other one. And she got nothing but support from, from that uh, association. And the association said, well, if we like it, we'll, we, we'll, we'll, we'll consider replacing the one that we're already using. Plus we'll, we'll push it, you know? Well, that's like a golden opportunity, I think. But I think where I was what I was going to say is that in, you approach a traditional publisher. Um, there would be some that would be interested. The trick would be to find the exact person at the exact publishing house at the exact time, and that's the problem that you're you're up against. Is mm-hmm. um, that a lot of people don't know that uh, in children's publishing, a lot of times that a book gets rejected isn't just because they don't like the book. That's probably, that's just one reason out of, you know, 20 or 30. Um, sometimes it's, uh, we've, it's, it's as simple as we can only publish 30 books this year because that's what our budget allows and that's what our staff can handle. Right. Like we physically can't do 31 books and we already have slotted all of our books for this year and for next year and the year after that. And, so we're going to say no because yours is kind of similar to this other one. And even though we love your book and what they do is they just give you a form letter that just basically a rejection letter that says no. Right. They never give you that reason. And I think it's because they don't want to get into a dialogue back and forth. They really they really have this cold kind of um, way that they handle you. You know, you're you, you get handled. Right. And I, it's just because of the sheer numbers, you know, I mean, they're in their defense, they get beat up, you know, they're, they're, they're constantly getting, um, I mean, they, they have so the, the, there's such a glut of people that want to publish a book that, um, they really do have that can, can afford to have that mentality of, of just treating you like a number, unfortunately. Right. And it's a cold the, world, but it's it's the reality. And they don't have time to right. to treat everyone with, with kid gloves. So in this case of this this woman with the with the son with the disease, I think she would be much better personally, and I this is just an opinion, but I think personally she'd be better off going directly to market and just working through that association. That could generate tens of thousands of sales without having to do any marketing at all. Mm-hmm. If a, if a, if if a hospital system 
adopts your book and, and includes it in a packet, you know? Yep. That's, yeah, there's your sales. So, um, the other, uh, talking about traditional illustration, I think the person that that serves is, um, the person who's writing, um, you know, obviously, um, manuscripts that appeal to a mass audience. Um, and the, not to, not to say that there aren't traditional publishers that, that, um, deal with niche markets cause there definitely are, but my idea of niche and yours might be completely different because in their mind, a niche might be a hundred thousand potential customers. And for me, it's like 10,000 or 20,000 or something, you know, right. or even larger than that, you know? Um, and, and so, uh, but you know, um, people that are, are writing for those, um, mass markets, the, the, because, because the, um, the traditional model is so, you know, is so well in place that I think that, um, it, you can't overlook it. Even if you're looking at what's happening and you're seeing that, that children's publishing is, is suffering in a lot of ways. I mean, there's definitely been a lot of layoffs at, um, at the, even at the big publishing houses. In fact, I, I talked to a art director one time who was, who was very high up on the food chain at one of the big ones. And, um, she told me that, you know, there's, this was, this was, this is three years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't know how things are going now. I've heard that there's still, the staffs are still running low, but she said that they're, they're just so many of her friends had been laid off and you walk by their cubicle and it's just emptied out and you never got to say goodbye and uh, things like that. And and that was the first time in publishing that she had ever, um, experienced anything like that at all. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that tells me that they, that their numbers have been really down. And that was shortly after the 2008, 2009 kind of, uh, you know, financial crash. Right. That we kind of had. Um, and I think things have rebounded to some extent, but I think that they're still gun shy. I think they know that, that things are different in a lot of ways. But having said that, there's still a lot of people being discovered. There are a lot of, um, there are book properties that still sell really well. Mm -hmm. Um, if you get on one of those, you can make really good money. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's wise to overlook that. Um, if you look at some of the people that publishing is really, um, rewarding right now. Um, you know, if you ask them, well, what do you think of traditional publishing? I'm su- sure that they would have a very uh, good opinion of it in general, you know? Um, so the trick is, I think is keeping yourself open to where you can, you can maybe go in both directions or one direction at one time, but open to the possibility of others. I do think that there's a, there's definitely a bias against self-publishing, there always has been, I think it's, I think it's lifting and I think it's getting better, um, because so many people are going that direction. But interesting to me is how offended people in traditional publishing often are when you talk about self publishing. Um, it, from what I find is that people that are trying to get noticed by traditional publishers really get steeped in the dogma of this is the right way to do it. I'm right. doing it the right way. You know, um, you're doing it the wrong way. I'm doing it the right way. You'll see that this is a better way when in fact, most, um, people that go into traditional publishing, even if they do get noticed, even if they do get published, their books don't sell extremely well. So it can leave you with, um, with the situation where you're getting published but you're not making a ton of money. And that's most of publishing, you know, most right. people that are in that model. So to me, um, it's, I think it's smart to keep those other possibilities open because there are examples of people who have done quite well, especially in writing novels. Now you're, we're dealing more with children's books, so it's, it's, it's quite a bit different, but, and I would say that traditional publishing is a lot harder if you're making a children's book, a picture book versus a a novel, because you're dealing with really, really important graphic design elements and images and text treatments and stuff. Whereas in a novel, 
you know, is anybody going to really care if, if, if the graphic design isn't perfect, you know? Right. And you, and now it's getting taken out of their hands completely. It's just right. know, whatever's on the Kindle or whatever, exactly. whatever device that they're using to, they can exactly. change their font to the what font that they want and the size that they want. And yeah, all, yeah. Those, all those decisions are taken away from the author right. and their self-publishing where here, definitely not. Right. So, yeah, so those, those considerations, um, but I do find it interesting that that um, there's this. It's funny too because if you think about it, you know, in and I know that uh, in music, you know, there's a lot of people who lost right <laughs> from, from the establishment of of you know of record labels and and people in the in the record business. Um, and uh, th- of course, they don't like. Of course, they probably think Apple is the worst thing that's ever you know hit the earth. Um, but I I find it interesting that at least from an outsider looking in, if I look at games, if I look at, if I look at, um, uh, video games, sure. It seems as if there's a, there's a real welcoming, a real welcoming, um, what do do you call it? Like, uh, like an open arms for indie publishers, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm working on an Xbox game right now with a team, and we've had nothing but uh, open arms from Sony and from Microsoft. Whereas, can you imagine that doesn't happen in children's book publishing? No. Um, well, the it, same, it, if you, unless you're talking about comics, no, go ahead. unless uh-huh. you're talking about comics, right? We're, That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Because comics, they, they seem to have that where you know it's it's all about being independent and getting your stuff out there, and then right. then if if it's good, then you'll pick up a publisher, right? And, but in, but I would say, you know, in music, uh, you know, the, the term indie band is thrown around, like everybody knows what that is. Right. Right. But, um, but indie publisher or indie artist, indie, indie children's book author, (laughs) no, you know, and it's, and it's, it's frowned upon so much Mm -hmm. by the establishment. And I think, I think there's a reason for that. I think there's a logical reason. And I think, you know, when you're talking about music, you play your music on, on your, uh, well now on your computer, your i your iPad or whatever it is, uh, but it sounds exactly the same. It's coming out of the speakers that you already have bought. So whether you're listening to something that was published traditionally in music or indie published, it's coming out of the same device, right? Mm-hmm. And if you watch a movie that was that was um, you know that some students made of you know some film that that somebody made for a festival or something it's played on your computer screen or your tv screen or your tablet um and a video game is played on your tv it's played you know it can be played on the xbox yeah in in any game you know Mm -hmm. but when you get to children's publishing i think it's because you know you're you're talking about a book that isn't something that's it that's at least for traditional books it's it's made each time you know it's it's produced so that the, the device that's delivering it is is different. 